all life is and thrives on information. Information is the key to life. All of this complexity, all of the different cell types that build a body, that make the eye and the neuron and the skin, all of the information is encoded in DNA and then expressed in the form of RNA. And when something goes wrong, it usually can be traced to a change in the information that's being expressed. You know, if we can understand how the cell normally handles its own informational problems, then we can use those tools to fix information inside of a patient. I'm Craig Mello, and I help discover RNA interference. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronomer. I, want, I actually wanted to go to the stars, though. I didn't want to just look at them. And then uh, when I was reading the newspaper one morning, uh, I read that um, they had cloned the human insulin gene in bacteria. And the bacteria could make the human insulin protein. And I thought that's incredibly powerful, you know, because you could make therapies, you could cure people with genetics. So I wanted to be a geneticist after that. I'm Akshay Vaishnav. I'm the president of research and development here at Alma Island Pharmaceuticals based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. There are about 20,000 genes in our DNA, so 20,000 distinct blueprints. In all of us, some of them will be faulty, will have minor mistakes in them, and from time to time they can be involved in disease. When there's a genetic defect in an organism, we call it a mutation. How do you rescue the mutation with good DNA? This was my motivation when I was a kid. I was thinking how powerful that would be, but also realizing that we really didn't know anything about what was needed to get a gene back into an organism in a functional way. Thank you. So RNAi or RNA interference is the process by which the cell has developed a mechanism to degrade or break down any specific messenger RNA in the cell. If from the 20,000 different genes there are 20,000 different mRNAs, let's say one of them, number 500, is involved in some human disease, we can harness the power of RNAi to degrade that messenger RNA, number 500, and hopefully prevent the production of the protein associated with that messenger RNA, and thereby help the individual who has that disease. What was so exciting about the discovery of RNAi was the realization that we could now program it artificially. We could make a guide. For example, if you wanted to find the play Hamlet, all you'd have to do is remember to be or not to be from the play. Type that in and you'll find the entire play on the World Wide Web. We can now program the cell's own mRNA silencing machinery to find and regulate RNAs that are causing disease. You're turning off the tap rather than mopping up the floor after all the abnormal protein has been produced. And in doing so, you're getting at the heart of disease and turning it off at the earliest stages. I see it being used for really, really big problems like Alzheimer's and age-related dementia. The search engine is present in every cell and it's just sitting there waiting for the guide. So you can design drugs basically by typing. What excites me the most is that ultimately science can prevail over human disease. I always tell people that the real prize, the real reward is the discovery itself for the first time finding something that no one's ever seen before. It's a very exciting time to be alive. It's a fascinating time to be a biologist, certainly, and the tools for discovering how life uses information are now so powerful that I think we will have major breakthroughs in the next you know, decades.